I'd like to call the Streamer Community High School District 77 board meeting to order. We please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda changes this evening? Uh, none. Okay, do we have any public comments this evening? Seeing none. All right, at this time we need to move to approve the consent agenda. There was one item in there. There is, is duplicate. There's a duplicate, so their, their approval would be just with one bill, not a duplicate bill. Okay, do we have a motion to approve that consent agenda? We'll move. Mr. Reynolds? So, so <coughs> First of all, we got boys basketball. Um, their team is currently four to three. They played in the Kaskaskia Classic at Carlisle to start the year, and they got two to two in that. Then they beat Waterloo at home in Carlisle on the road. They recently put in a valiant effort against Columbia, and just before that, they played in the Sager Strong Shootout in St. Louis. They lost to Duchesne from St. Charles in a great event that raises money for cancer research. Next is girls basketball. Um, their records are currently varsity 8-2, to two, JV 7-3, and freshman 3-2. They are playing at home tonight. The girls also adopted a family through Big Brothers and Big Sisters of St. Louis for this holiday season. They spent a Saturday afternoon shopping and wrapping 35 presents for a single mother and her two children. In addition to the presents, they also paid for one month's utilities for the family. For bowling, both the boys and girls bowling teams bowled in the Southern Illinois Challenge. Uh, the boys bowled very well and placed second in the morning session. The girls placed second in their silver division, and the current records are varsity boys 7-4, to four, JV boys 9-2, to two, varsity girls 6-1, to one, and JV girls 5-2. to two. Uh, For cheerleading, cheerleading uh, the cheerleaders are in the middle of their competition season, and they performed at competitions two weeks ago and just this past Sunday. Uh, dance, the dance team has performed at the blue and white scrimmage, one girls game and one boys game so far, and their season is going very well. For band, they had their Christmas concert a few weeks ago. Now they're working on pep band game music for basketball season, and they are also having a few talented students play Christmas carols in the halls in the mornings this week. For chorus, um, very similar, they sang at the Christmas concert a few weeks ago, and they are also currently working on music for the spring. And members interested in solo contests are currently working on their pieces now. For Winter Guard, the Winter Guard has kicked off their seventh season with a really good start, with a total of 13 members. They're working on a show that is a cover of Sia's Chandelier by an acapella group, and their first show is at Mascuta High School on January 26th. Um, the art department, so art students have been busy beautifying the school. They painted blue and gray stripes along the walls of the ramp to add some color, and painted the front of the stage as well. They also have plans to add some additional items to the project Revamp the Ramp. Uh, for Scholar Bowl, Scholar Bowl started their season in two leagues, the Metro East Quad League and the Cahokia Conference. They have gotten off to a slow start with a lot of new varsity players, but the season usually picks up after break, and they expect to start improving around that time. And then finally, Student Council has wrapped up with their Christmas collections and also literally wrapped all of the presents they bought with that money for needy families. Ticket sales have been going on for the upcoming blood drive, which will be held on January 11th. And they also plan to sell midget turvis cups sometime next semester. And that's all I got. Okay, good deal. Any questions or comments? Well, sounds pretty active around here. <coughs> Let's move on uh, to the principal this evening. Yeah. Let's move to the superintendent's report. Uh, a couple, I'll make a couple quick notes um, from what Jill is going to cover in the principal report. Uh, we do have one of our teachers here tonight. She is kind of in charge of the, uh, what was, what are we doing with the ramp? The called? revamp. The, the revamp, ramp. the ramp. And so uh, we've got a, a, a lot of things. We have a little bit of a chance 
Uh, I know we moved a bunch of our uh, cases out here that had the Illinois State Scholars, the Iron Midgets, and that's to the uh, next hallway, which is the new hallway from 2011. And uh, I think we're going to put some signage up there and kind of make that kind of our academic hall of fame. It's kind of a nice little area. Um, uh, we had uh, Illinois State Scholars were announced, and I think Jill sent that out, or Mrs. Uh, Miner sent it out. We had 21 this year, so that was a very nice um, number from this class. So that was good from hers. Um, the holiday tournament is next week. Um, you have a copy of the schedule. Um, we play at 5.30 on Wednesday 26th and Thursday 27th, and then earlier on Friday. Um, you know, please come on up and watch a little basketball. This, uh, I remember years ago, this was one of the, the hottest tickets around with the Freeburg Columbia Holiday Tournament, so it's always usually pretty good. Uh, I mentioned before the meeting, or at the uh, beginning of the meeting, uh, that's the doors, that's an example of our new hardware. Uh, that project has been complete, um, and so far I haven't had any, I mean, everybody really likes the hardware, it's, it's working well. Um, the biggest thing now is we just have to go through and make sure the right people have the right level of key access that they need to get to wherever they need to get. Um, and then lastly, um, I want to wish everybody on the board and everybody in the Freeburg Midget uh, family a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks. Any questions or comments? With all the door hardware is installed in, now it's complete. It's all complete. All installed, yep. Very nice. Works out well. Okay, let's move on to old business. Okay, uh, district reorganization update. At the November meeting, Smith and Board um, made the decision to vote down the committee attend resolution. Uh, Dr. Wamser had posted on his Facebook, um, and this is a quote, at this time this effectively ends the conversation, the consolidation involving Smith and CCSD 130. So uh, the next step is, since Freeburg Grade School and Freeburg High School have both voted to pass the resolution. That resolution um, did include all three districts. Um, so if we would want to move forward, that would be one thing we'd have to do is pass a different resolution. Um, I'm curious, you know, input from the board. We did meet last, and when I say we, the four superintendents from St. LaVoy, Freeburg Grade School, Freeburg High School, and Smith, and met last Wednesday um, to kind of talk about what's our next step. We talked a little bit about calendar but then also talk about the next step. And what we had kind of said is, from the consolidation, one of the biggest um, positives from the consultants was um, curriculum. And so how can we, if we're remaining four districts, at least for now, how can we address curriculum? And so we were tossing back and forth some ideas about uh, what we could do about uh, putting it together and, and trying to align our curriculum across all four districts, including St. Um it, it would benefit all the kids in the grade school, which would be the trickle-up effect and, and benefit the high school. So we talked about, uh, kind of left the room with the possibility of, of maybe looking at a consultant to come in and to do somewhat of a similar study on our curriculum as our last consultants did on reorganization, where they would go through and look at our curriculum. Um, it would be a very broad uh, review of the curriculum all four districts. They would come back, give us recommendations either on curriculum or what we could do. Um, you know, if this was a consolidated district with all four, we were looking at about 2,000 students. Districts that size typically have full-time people on staff that deal with curriculum. So. That could be a recommendation. It could be, you know, just, you know, Smithton had very high scores in this last couple testing. What are they doing? How can we take what they're doing, bring it to the other schools? We try to do this in a little bit more formal uh, manner than just to kind of, you know, get teachers together and talk. It, it's, it's better to have an expert in to kind of, maybe to have a little bit of um, weight to, to kind of force some changes if changes need to be made. But then we really need somebody to but, but, you know, no decisions, but that was kind of an idea that came out of that meeting. So, my, my question to you guys is what, what, do you have questions or do you have desires? <clears throat> the first blush, that idea sounds more inclusive 
if, if the three superintendents are of the, of the same um, uh, mindset about doing that, since two, two of a major school will be participating, two other ones will, St. Memorial was, off, was kind of chose to be out in the cold in the beginning, but uh, it sounds more inclusive than if, if we can get school went forward and then maybe those things could still happen, but I kind of like, I like hearing what you just said. Is Freeburg Grade Schools interested at all in consolidation or a study, a study on it? I don't know that you would have to do a study. I mean, that just seems like a lot more expense. I think, I think the the big push from, in my opinion, the big push from the positives from improvement in the curriculum was more on the elementary level. Mm -hmm. That that all three elementary districts, and again, I'm including Santa Barbara because they originally were in the study. That the benefit for the curriculum improvement would be seen directly in the elementary, right. and then. Again, we would the benefit would be at the high school because we would get everybody would have the same exact background. Right. Um, so, to me, that was the big push. Looking at just Freeburg High School and, and Freeburg and Freeburg Grade School, there doesn't seem to be that advantage in the curriculum. I mean, that's that's my opinion. You know, not really studying it. Um, you don't know, think there would be enough financial um, between the two? There not having that much change. Well, their, you know, their salaries are a lot closer to our salaries than either Smithton or St. Laboris are. So you, you're not going to see, um, I don't think you're going to see a huge difference in the cost, what it would cost to put the two districts together because you're not talking about a whole lot more money to be added. Um, uh, Dr. Wamser had gotten information from the state. One of the things he said at his meeting was, Financially, the state has, has told him that the money that would be coming to a consolidated district under the evidence-based funding model was not going to be uh, any kind of increase uh, substantially at all. I mean, it, it could have been even just even amount of money that we would have gotten under the new evidence-based funding model. So I don't see us benefiting financially by putting us together at least more money coming from the state. Now, could you uh, not have a two superintendents? Absolutely. But other than that, I don't see there's a lot of savings administratively because you know the people they have doing what they have doing with money, <coughs> somebody that does ours, we wouldn't eliminate one of those. You know, we still need our bookkeeper. They still need their person that does the book. Same thing with the administration besides the superintendent. So. I, I, you might be able to save one superintendent salary, but the little bit of difference is going to—I I think it's going to be a wash financially. I haven't looked at the numbers, <coughs> right? And I just don't see the curriculum benefit because we're—you know—we're two different levels. Right. It's not like we're—they're going to—it's not like we're going to force them to change. Right. And, and I, the big, again, the big benefit from the whole study was the fact that. We could bring all three districts together and look at the curriculum and then get the curriculum aligned and pick and choose what is working and, and get that together and then that would absolutely benefit high school. So I play my hand too. How much would a consultant cost? Well, you're you're looking at probably another with the two districts I'd say it might be a little bit cheaper, but I bet you're still about eight grand. Did Dr. Wamser uh, offer up any <clears throat> explanation because I read the article and everything. I applauded Smith in one day. Uh, they took a lead and proposed the consolidation study. Um, <coughs> we all participated under good faith. The consolidation study came out uh, favorable and now they're, they're taking the, uh, the stand that it's not in their best interest because uh, I was a little put off by the fact that they had $2 million in their uh, working cash fund that that would even enter, enter into it. Everybody's concerned about the, the legal ramifications of District 70. Uh, it seems like there was a little gamesmanship in, in the proposal to, to have a consolidated 
recommendation study for for their district, uh, whether or not that's that's the case to get their bond issue passed for a thing. It didn't work out. Um, I, I don't know. For him to say that that's it, my understanding is that 50 individuals can fill out a petition and enforce their hand uh, on it. I think I think that would be a good thing uh, for the public to know that uh, for whatever reason why they're they're choosing now not to participate after after proposing participation in the study, getting favorable results. And now, uh, and now a school board doesn't want to do it. They did, did they say anything? I went to the meeting. I just wanted to hear what they were going to say. <clears throat> and, and I think the, the article in the paper was pretty accurate of what they said. Um, they did mention the, uh, the balance, the positive balance that they had, and that if that was uh, we consolidated, then they would spread that over to the other district. So that was mentioned, and then the other is the lawsuits, the fear of what would happen with future lawsuits. And um, I think uh, one of the board members was a little more vocal in, in his comment, and I think this was actually pretty well thought out, was if we have as much information as we have now, and I think he put it at 75% from the study. If we know 75% of the information, um, and your opinion now is to either that if you had a vote now, if you wanted to consolidate or not consolidate, then if you know 75%, then if you knew 100%, would your opinion change? And so um, I, I, I don't know exactly what the makeup was two years ago when they voted it in. Um, there may be one or two members, but I think most of the board was there. It just seemed that the board was not, most of the board, one board member voted yes, and he felt like we'd put the time and effort into it. We needed to spend a little more time uh, but the rest of the board that was there um, voted no. I mean, but, but what they said in the paper was true. Those were the two big reasons that they gave. I find it kind of ironic, actually, um, because they would be the ones that could gain the most out of it right now because they didn't get the reference in the past and they could change the <coughs> boundaries to help them with their space constraints. And like Dennis said, they're the ones that initiated it and then they didn't follow through. I went to their explanation meeting, the referendum, back when they had that, and um, asked them at the time, why are you doing this in the middle of the study? I don't understand. You asked for a study, and then you, you decided to go and, and go off and look for more money and build on your building when you haven't even got the results. So I find it ironic that they have no interest in it, and it can benefit them as much as anybody, because they're in a kind of a bind, and I don't think they're going to get any bad. They'll probably throw it right back up again, but I doubt it. Really Freeber Grade School has their board meeting tonight. <coughs> uh, I, I, I don't know if this was on their agenda or not to talk about this. So, um, what I would like to do is I would like to, um, you know, kind of take some of the opinions that we've gotten tonight and, and you know, talk with Tommy and see what her board felt like and then maybe pursue the idea, not necessarily sign any contracts, but the idea of maybe having a curriculum person. If we could find a consultant that would come in and look at it, I don't know what they cost. I have, you know, it just seemed like a pretty good idea that was thrown out of the table. So. I would be interested in that okay. person. <coughs> and Smith was also at that meeting saying that they would be. All, all, all four did all four. Okay. Yeah. And certainly finding out uh, the cost structure of that, that type of. That doesn't, that doesn't cost us anything. Mm -hmm. No. I was going to say, as far as the study goes, I, I would like to see probably all the administrators get together for a few more times and, and maybe at least uh, get this uh, curriculum thing straightened out. And I think if we get that straightened out, uh, you know, like you said, it'll bring all the kids up pretty well on the same level. And, and I think for the short term, as far as the consolidation goes, I think this, to me, just let it go and address it maybe in a couple of years or so. Wait and see what the fit of it seems to be. 
like Ray said, I don't think it's going to be worth it tomorrow for us in the grade school to go along. Is there any plus Uh, the savings would be in our more of our purchase services, things like our architect, our lawyer. Um, all well, Freeburg Grade School and Freeburg High School both use the same insurance. We're both in the Egyptian Trust, so I don't know if we were together. I don't think there would be any savings there, but we could save a little bit on those two. You know, the architect, um, the lawyer, things like that. Back when this thing started, I mean, I got a lot of feedback from people that, that said, that at least, if you can't get anything else, it'd be nice if these grades go on to work together. I mean, a lot of that feedback early on, before we ever got to study any of the information, back, much less the financial. Um, I don't want to let it just go yet. That's my personal opinion. I think it needs to be, um, you can have your superintendent's meeting, filter back to the Smith board and hopefully they'll see some of this in the paper, but I still think they made a, a great mistake when they don't have, they say they don't have any space in the classrooms, I think, based on what the study said, that they could redraw the, just the line, but they didn't do anything else in that process to have a few more go to free learning and a little bit less and stuff and <coughs> solve some of the problems. I, I don't really want to, I mean, if, if you want, we can table it. Uh, tabling it makes sense. Um, I don't believe doing a, setting up a committee of 10 for just the grade school and the high school makes sense. Right. So maybe tabling it until we see what <coughs> they can do. I still think they're in limbo with, what, with passing the referendum. I think they're going to throw it back up as soon as they can. And I mean, how many times can they throw it up there until they finally give up? I think this time, you know, the vote was so close. You know, they, they've got to go for it again. So you might as well yeah. just wait till this cycle goes right. through. Right, well, right. Otherwise the study doesn't go out. away. I mean, that work is already done. So right. nothing's true. going to change over six months. In, in my opinion, under this board that Smithson has right now, they are not in favor and will not be in favor. And I don't think there's anything that's going to change their mind. At least that's my impression from the my, my observation. And I'm hopeful the public takes it out of their hands. Right. And St. Lavore could do the same thing. So I think it's 10% of the, the people that voted in the last election. Yes. Yeah. So and now we just said it twice on our video. So people know. But at this point, as a board, do we think we should direct Greg to talk with the other superintendents about uh, working towards a curriculum? working together to get these kids coming up to the high school all on the same level. All right, so I think we should work towards, you know, we've got all the different schools with three different curriculums. I think we need to standardize that. So, right. so I think so we've got a better idea of what's coming up to the high school. So at this point, let's start off with that. And we'll go from there and kind of see what happens with Smith and their, their new building. Okay, let's move to item B. All right, um, I had um, a couple pieces of information. This is for the second uh, uh, tax levy. I had shared with you kind of a, a levy summary. Uh, this was in your packets. to show the difference between if the EAB increased by 2.5%, um, what our uh, revenue was at 45 uh, and, and then... Uh, uh, the actual percentage I'm uh, presenting, I've lowered since the November uh, to, to the 7.1948 percent increase in the EAB. It puts us at an increase of revenue just under the 5 percent, which then uh, permits us not to have a truth and taxation hearing. Uh, the second piece is in your uh, folder as well. Um, this was uh, one of somebody asked me to put this together. Um, so. Basically what this does is just give you a history of the tax year and the levy year, the EABs, 
how much of an increase there was in the EAB, what the difference was in the tax rates, and then the big question was what is the impact on voters between $100,000 and $200,000 and $300,000 on homes. So you can look at the history and see what's happened. As far as the proposals for this year's levy, uh, it doesn't matter w which percentage, whether we go, at, if, if the EAB comes in two and a half or if it comes up to the seven, um, our, our tax rate will go down um, again over last year's rate, um, anywhere from about, um, about a cent and a half to a little over five cents. Um, the change that I, and I wrote to you about this in a, a memo earlier was I got information from the county that the EAB was, was actually going to, only going to go up a small percentage, um, but their new construction um, amounts were quite a bit lower than what I'd even gotten from the village of Freeburg, so um, kind of reevaluated, felt very comfortable. And so the EAB that I'm looking to um, have approved by you guys is the 288,880,000. Did I say that right? $288,880,000, um, which would generate um, an increase of about $300,000 overall in, in revenue. Uh, but it is expected uh, that the tax rate will go down um, with that. Any questions or comments on this? Just that I'd, I'd like to look at it again more as to where it falls. It actually comes in and they come in the EAB. And, and there, there is still that grant that's out there that I was planning on applying for. It doesn't have to be applied for until January, and then we won't find out whether or not you qualify for the grant. And once you qualify, then you can still decide whether you want to take the grant. And basically, what that does is it it, 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 it takes a little bit of the money that would be in the EAB, which would essentially lower our residents' um, EAB and, and their um, what they have to put in. So there's a possibility that that could help out as well. Okay. Give me a motion to set the 2018 levy at $288,880,000 with individual levy revenues as presented. Go. Second. Good Tom. <laughs> Mike, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 Item C. Uh, this is uh, annual business uh, where those that attended the IIII conference kind of give a uh, brief uh, overview. A brief overview of what they covered. Um, or what they saw at the conference. And I kind of wrote up um, some of my highlights. I will tell you, uh, just to kind of move this along, the vendor hall was wonderful, got a, a bunch of great ideas, uh, have put some of those in motion, at least conversations. Uh, but the other was the opening, um, uh, was it up at opening of Saturday morning, presentation by Ruby Bridges, who was a civil rights, or he is a civil rights activist, and she was one of the first African-American um, children to integrate one of the New Orleans schools and their story was just was just awesome. I, I just really enjoyed it and uh, so that was kind of my highlight. Got that. Where would you like to go next? I would. <laughs> and actually, when I got home, I, uh, most of you have seen this. I had this marked. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I remember this from, well, some of us remember this from back in the day. You know, this picture was painted by Norman Rockwell. And I, I picked up one of these books probably 35 years ago. But, but anyway, um, I'll pass that around. I think we'll look at it. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm with Greg. I was sitting in between two older black ladies, and both of them were crying. And that's Ruby Bridges. So yeah. that's a depiction that's, that's of Ruby Bridges. Yeah. Yes, that, that young girl. Um, you know, I, I thought I thought during that during that session, I just made a couple of notes here. 
you know, that we, we were uh, uh, witnessing, you know, history uh, with that young know, lady. She talked about, you know, just growing up in a working class home. Um, you know, they had a black school and a white school. The city came down. Um, she, it was a bigger school. It was a nicer school. You know, she thought that, that you know, it was, uh, you know, it was going to be, you know, like something special. She took a test, scored very well. Uh, three or four students were identified. All the other students, their parents pulled them back. She was the only one that left her community in school to go to this to go to this new school. Um, they, uh, she said, it was so special, and, it's, and she said, I thought I was going to college. She's six years old, but she thought that you know they were building this up so well. It was a big, nice building. Uh, all of the white parents pulled all of their children out the day she arrived. And she walked in, and uh, her teacher was white, and she said she was white and wonderful, and neither one missed a day the entire first year that she was there. Um, and she said, what a, what a wonderful difference that woman made. Uh, it was them against the world. Uh, the teacher taught her at an early age, it's not about the color of your skin, but it's simply good versus evil. And uh, her and her parents were literally literally pioneers doing that movement. But you can hear a pin drop in that in that auditorium with how many people? A couple of oh three thousand at least. Yeah. You could hear a pin drop. It was it was uh, I don't know one of the most moving experiences and those you know, those of you who were there probably will mm -hmm. add add to this. I've never I I heard some in, in my professional life some pretty impressive speeches but but this one was this was just you know, just kind of extra, extra special. Uh, the first guy was the Illinois, and uh, the, the keynote speaker was the Illinois and, and National Superintendent of the Year. And his thing was uh, redefining ready for college and career. Talked about experiences that he had focused on, and not only adding to curriculum, but adding apprenticeships, workplace learning, teaching computer science to all students. <coughs> they were currently piloting an app development curriculum for, for students to, uh, to pursue. Sunday, so we didn't hear the last one. But uh, went to an, I went to a thing on, on pensions, and Greg will give you the handouts on those. Basically, until 2030 something, things are going to be okay, and everything just all needs to be seen. Everybody probably read about that. There was another one on transforming um, schools and community strategy to engage. Um, that's a lot of a lot of that stuff was uh, referendum sharing ideas, you know, get information out. Uh, Communication processes, things like that. And then Gary, one of Gary Henning's favorite uh, programs to go to was the uh, uh, IHSA uh, update with Craig Anderson, who's the executive director. And uh, there were a lot of questions and answers there, but he basically, the three things I kind of walked away from with it, from it with was uh, bass fishing is going to be a new sport in, in Illinois, uh, video gaming. And there are some school districts that are in close proximity that are so small, and they've already got some of this going on. The unified teams uh, embracing small schools, you know, so that people can get yeah, caught up. Put a team on the field. Um, and then uh, the last one that I attended was one on school uh, safety, uh, cyberbullying, social media, uh, sexting, and stuff like that. And this retired uh, police officer from the from either Chicago or New York, he's put this program together. And like, I don't have any kids in school now, but if I did, it was it was like, a, I mean, this guy has run into everything. Talked about a young, you know, like a freshman girl, and she's, somebody's online, you know, convincing her to take a picture of herself and send it. And she does, and, and then uh, and then sends it back, I need another one, and she's nervous. She says, well, if you don't, I'm gonna send that to everybody. And the stuff that's going on, and, and probably some of you sitting around the table are way more aware of that than I am, but it was stinking frightening. And uh, this guy has a business uh, that he basically you know, comes in and uh, does sessions for parents, and probably our police department does the same thing. But this guy covered a tremendous amount of bases in about the, in the hour that he had, but it was just really uh, uh, an eye opening thing. And I've got a packet of data on that. 
scary. I mean, it was scary with what young kids and, and, and the predators that are out there, you know, doing doing the things that they're doing. <coughs> My kids, I don't have young kids anymore. They're all out of the way, but uh, I don't know, it, was, it was an eye opener. That's, uh, that's it. A good, all in all, a good, uh, good, uh, good experience. me is the one thing that saved her was her childhood innocence. They, on her way to school, she was in a car and there was all these people just sneering and throwing things at her and signs and everything, and she thought it was Mardi Gras. So she wasn't frightened at all, because in New Orleans, you have Mardi Gras. So I, can, I think more about how scared her parents were in that car, and she thinks she's going off to college and you better throw a big party on the way there. So it was, it was good how the because I had never heard her story. I didn't know that that was a real person. I just thought it was a Norman Rockwell painting. And I never heard that story before, so that was good. Um, the majority of the classes that I attended were all on school safety. It's just what my interest was when I went up there, and I went to a lot of them. And they were, everything that I classed, they covered physical safety, the schools, threat, threat identification and assessment of individuals, um, the pathway to intended violence, and the see something, say something. That was in a lot of the classes. A lot of times, someone will see something and they won't say anything until it's too late. So this encourages students who would be afraid to be able to anonymously say something and cover that. Um, I tried to get into the class that you took, and that would be one of the only things I would change up there is some of the classes they need to put in their rooms. <laughs> I tried, you couldn't even get into the room, um, so I couldn't take that one. Yeah. Um, one of the classes I did attend that wasn't on safety was K through 12 education at a crossroads, rural schools in the crosshairs. And the presentation was very good, but sitting in the audience and listening to the rumblings around me was almost more interesting than the presentation. There was a lot of anger in that room. Um, because they, rural schools don't have the money that Chicago schools have. They don't have an aviation department or things like that. So they were talking about the teacher shortage in rural schools, they can't compete with big cities to bring in good teachers. Um, they talked about school funding reform and they talked about consolidation and by the rumblings of the room, they are against consolidation. So it was, that was a definitely an interesting class I took too. But overall, it was a really good, very informative conference. Um, I attend, also attended the review for this thing. It was amazing. Um, her perspective made all the difference in the world. Um, so, being six is a good age. <laughs> um, I attended nine sessions, including um, the delegate assembly, and I also went to um, the vendor fair, which was very interesting. Um, the delegate assembly was my first time ever going there. I think it, I, I would be interested in volunteering to do it again next year. Um, so I would <coughs> request that we talk about the what's going before the assembly as a group at the November meeting before I go up there. Because I think it's, um, one of the issues this time was guns in schools, and I voted on that. Um, it wasn't actually guns in schools, it was the choice of a school to, to allow guns in schools. So, um, overwhelmingly to me, it looked like it was small schools against large schools. Um, the vote was, 179 for um, allowing the choice to put guns in your schools against 203. And that's with some people not voting. There are 408 delegates there. But that's for adults to carry guns. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. That's Just not, to make sure. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> and, and that's not saying the state would pass that law at all. Allow that. That would, is <coughs> what the ISBE would, would lobby for at, at the state. So. Um, and that was interesting, and like I said, to me, it was overwhelmingly large schools against small schools. Um, they, there were a lot of arguments about, you know, teachers aren't trained. Well, there's nothing in the law that says teachers will be the ones carrying the guns. It could be higher safety people. It could be, there, there are lots of different options. And of course, the small schools, there are some small schools that don't have their own police departments, and the closest county cop could be 45 minutes away. And that's, you know, it only takes six minutes to, you know, it takes very few, very little time to, and, and they don't have the option now of hiring um, security or things like that under this current state laws. So, um, <coughs> there, but there.
there were quite a few different things. There was a student safety and protection. Um, it ended up not being that. There were three, two different on student safety that weren't considered. And then the other student safety one was the gun debate. Um, there was one on financing in public school. Um, that, that they're lobbying to allow um, high schools to um, get loans for um, green energy without going to the public for that money. Um, so they voted for that. Um, they voted on a charter school funding to and that carry. Um, they, they voted against local authority and safety practices. So local schools don't have the right to they won't have the right to make their own safety practices. Um, and then um, they voted for mental health services and voted against student registration. I'm sorry, they voted against mental health services and for student voter registration. Um, I attended a meeting on um, racial equity in the school and the, uh, the big thing was um, equality isn't necessarily equity. So we gotta kind of remember that when we're at schools and I, there was, I've got quite a bit of information on that. Um, the duty to warn, which is a public safety or school safety issue and how tricky that can be um, warning a school and the, the parents of children in school when there's been a threat and how, and you know there are laws we can break by actually letting parents know. I, I, I didn't realize it went that far, so that, that was very eye-opening. Um, financial challenges and innovative solutions, that was actually given by the Belleville High School District. Um, they had some interesting ways of cutting um, money out of their budget to save money. Uh, I did one on essential school services, which talked a lot about what the regional offices of education offer all schools as, as services. Um, the Illinois Empower, which it has to do with Every Student Succeeds Act, so that will affect all the schools in the state, um, and how that is, how, how we, we can get um, support for that. I attended one on preventing uh, sexual misconduct and sexual harassment in the school. Uh, our policy on that is uh, 5.20, and we have a complaint form for that also. Um, <coughs> Some, in some cases, um, you can't complain about a student, which again, that, that um, if, if a student makes false allegations and things like that, not that there's a whole lot of those, don't get me wrong, but in some cases, there, it, even if it damages the teacher's reputation and things like that, there is no repercussions in some cases, especially if the student would have an IEP or things like that. So that was kind of eye-opening also. Um, and it's very different in a school settlement um, so um, versus a civilian settlement, a school set situation versus a civilian situation. Um, yeah, social media posts and things, there, there's a whole lot. You have to be careful with that. Texting with, with students, even with sports and things like that, which I know happens a lot at Freebird. There was a lot of discussion with that. that was, there was a whole lot in that one. Um, and then I attended the general session with David Schuler, which was about uh, high schools and like uh, race and career pathways and things like that. There was a lot of good information in that that I thought we could bring back and use here. AP classes and um, dual credit uh, classes and things like that. So that's about all I have. I that's it. Any questions or comments? <coughs> Just delivered that thing in an unbelievable way. I, I, I think everybody in that room was impacted by that in, in, in different ways. It, it, it was, I don't know, one of the highlights of my year. <laughs> really was. I felt like a baby. 64, 65. Yeah, somewhere around there, I don't remember. So, 50th Move on.
to do business? Uh, item A, uh, I, I spoke with uh, Joe Bradzel from Trimco. Um, so he came out, we talked about the roof, the windows, um, the uh, brickwork. Um, he was going to put together a uh, price for us. Um, I have not gotten that. So we're going to have to wait till January to really look at that price. Uh, Trepco can actually put together the RFP and do all the bidding for us. And that's allowed by the state. Um, they set a price and then the bids have to come under that price. And so the board would basically set a max price is what they would do when it comes to that. So, but that will be in January. Um, strategic planning, unfortunately I had a, a family uh, medical issue that had to be taken care of so we did not have that so if we would like we can talk uh, now about do we want to try to just shoot for the January meeting or okay so we'll just okay. we'll just plan on the January and we can talk if there's more information that you would like to put together okay all right see um, one of the other uh, items that I wrote to you about in an update was the sounds uh, the gym <coughs> sound issues what I'm calling uh, when we took down all those uh, baffles we put up the HVAC we thought we would leave them out right away it, it became uh, it, it was, the echoes were horrible the sound was terrible so uh, we've done a couple things we put up some of the baffles it's improved a little bit um, Jeff Alt has brought in a sound board that's his own, that he's kind of hooked into our system and that's helped out a little bit. I was at the boys game the other night. I still think there's issues. Um, so I met with a representative. I, I sent out a, uh, a little questionnaire to regional superintendent or area superintendents and got, uh, kept getting this company back, um, GNS Architectural Products out of St. Louis. So he came in the other day. Uh, what he has shown me are two different products. Um, Again, he's going to work up a price so that we have an idea of what this is going to cost. I will tell you the first number he threw out at me was about $30,000. Uh, so the first product is, you probably see this on walls, it's basically like a two inch foam. It, it, you put it a different place on the wall, it absorbs. Uh, but the other one that I've seen a little more, and this is a sample of it, I don't think we'd go with red, but it's basically the same exact material that we have in our baffles, except this is hung horizontally between the rafters and, and again we could change the colors but that is to help absorb the sound um, and then the the other issue is the the sound system the sound I know the speakers uh, before rich uh, and we can pass that around if you like but when these things fall from the ceiling if they fall it's like a leaf coming down they're so light they literally weigh ounces uh, but it's the same material it's just it just made to absorb sound uh, the current speakers were installed by Rich Wakefield back in the 70s. That, those big, huge speakers in the center. And I'm not a, a, a sound expert by any means, but I think one of the issues is we have all that sound coming from one spot to fill the gym. It has to shoot somewhere. And if a lot of the gyms, and I pay attention to the gyms we go there, a lot of them uh, uh, have smaller speakers throughout. So they, they can play a lot lower volume. So that's something we look at when I talk with uh, this guy's name, Dustin, when I talk to him, his, in his opinion, of course he's selling the product, is that you first look at the sound dampening issue and then you come back and evaluate the, the, the stereos and to see what you need and as far as the speakers and um, Jeff Alt's a lot more of an electronic person than I am. He, I think in his opinion our system is, is the electronic part of our system is still in decent shape. It's the speakers that we're going to have to look at. So um, what I'm hoping is we'll get some information on this by the January meeting. That way we can look at it. That would have to be bid. In my opinion, it's going to be over the 25 threshold, but I still want to get separate uh, additional bids on it. But we'll look at that. Uh, so I don't really have any more information than just kind of... Do you think a combination of both? He is. So... What he'd like to do is he'd like to take down all of our advertising and put up, you know, put these boards. Now, one thing he did say, and his company can provide this, so he was very helpful, uh, <laughs> is they can take this material and they can do, I don't know what it's called, it's kind of, I guess, like a screen material, 
where they would actually put the advertisers uh, on this material, and that could help out. The other is on the north and south side, he talked about putting this material above the windows. And it, it, so if it comes off the roof, it hits that softer material, and that would help some of the, the sound. So it would be a combination of both. If you put the advertisement on those, if that company doesn't want to advertise anymore, how easy is it to take the advertisement off and put a new advertisement on? That's a great question. Good point. And then pay out. Yeah. Right. We just have to have like 25 year leases on there. <laughs> just got to write a bigger check. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Mr. Ross. How, uh, how sturdy is that material? I mean, it's almost like it's really light, yes, but I mean, it kind of falls and all kinds of it, So here. ours have been up, I know Mr. Mitchell put them up years and years ago. So not the, this not is the phone, but the, the, the This is the top. exact same material that we have up there now, okay. except it's just hung horizontally instead okay. of vertically. And so it, 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 it encapsulates more of that roof area mm -hmm. and stops it. But it doesn't, I mean, we don't have any that fall and tear. Okay. They just get, because of how high it is, we don't have a lift that goes up that we can cable tie it. So we just, he just has kind of jerry rigs it where he just hooks it up. And if they hit the ball and it knocks it up there, then they, that's where they okay. fall down. So they don't get damaged, though. That's what I'm concerned about. Mm -hmm. Okay. My question is. I don't know if they offered or what cost it. I've seen it before, can't remember where I've seen it. And I thought we could, it would probably make the ceiling look better and probably do something with the light and also your sound. Is, uh, I've, I've seen spray on products. I don't know, did he offer anything like that? Well, or, he didn't sell that. So, <laughs> um, but the spray on is still a solid material. I mean, if you had this material, you yeah. can. I know they have they have a couple different spray foams that they use for insulation, yeah. but those are a little more rigid, and so it does. You don't get the effect of the, the, the absorption like you would on a material like that. And it's I, I know looking into houses and stuff that spray foam is pretty expensive. So, but those are options. So you'll come back to the next meeting. I will come back with more information <laughs> okay. for the next meeting. Item D. Um, <clears throat> went up to the um, fall meeting for our Prairie State Insurance Cooperative. Uh, they handle our uh, property and casualty workman's compensation insurance. Um, they run it through Arthur J. Gallagher. Um, we've had them for quite a few years. Um, that insurance is very good. They actually got a check back last year because they, they, they are doing so well financially that last year they had a surplus, so, so they gave all the districts checks back. So you probably saw them in the paper on the check. So, yeah. um, one of the things they are doing is they are now delving into the health insurance field, and they're going to start a co-op for health insurance. It is, uh, again, going to be managed by Arthur J. Gallagher. Um, what they are looking at is to try to get the first group of schools in that are interested that would then probably join next September 1st. Um, they run these cooperatives throughout the state. They, according to them, have been very successful. We're in the Egyptian Trust. The Egyptian Trust is moving March 1st to Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, we've had, uh, I know personally, uh, had quite a few issues with just dealing with the insurance, which I'm sure everybody has deal, you know, issues dealing with their insurance. Um, our insurance went up nine and a half percent last year, which is a, a pretty big chunk. Um, I don't know how Blue Cross Blue Shield or the management company that they're going to run through is going to help or, or improve. Uh, but we can provide our information, financial information, to um, the, the Prairie State Insurance Cooperative, and then they'll give us, shoot us the numbers, what we think. We can then um, decide if we want to join that cooperative. Then there's the, the other option is the brokerage that, that Smith then uses, brokerage firm, um, where they have the option of bidding their insurance out each year. Um, the common thread is every, all three of those are currently Blue Cross Blue Shield is the, the top pick. Um, Smith has had Blue Cross Blue Shield, I think, for the last three years. Their insurance has been fairly stable. Their increases have not been anywhere near what our increases are. 
Um, so what we're going to do is, is, not we're, Diane is going to put together financial information and send that to the company. We're going to get some numbers back and hopefully it looks appealing. Then we have to make the decision whether we want to jump ship and go with the prayer state or if we want to look at going with the brokerage. Um, but there is a buyout from um, the Egyptian Trust. And I don't remember what it is, but I think it's in the thirty dollars to $40,000 range cost us to, to buy out. So again, more information to come, but that is something that I did put it out to the teachers the other day that this is something that we're looking at and uh, again, trying to save money for everybody, the district and the teachers. So. Okay. Any questions on that? Just wait for more information. At this time, do we have any board correspondence? Uh, we do. We, we got a thank you note from Julie Tedford's family. Her her mother passed away, and uh, the district sent uh, a nice little law arrangement for her. Okay. Any agenda items? Uh, there are none. Do we have a reason to go into closed session? We do to speak about personnel and real estate and safety and security. Okay. Do we have a motion to go into closed session? Mr. Reynolds. Angie. Right, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, we're now going to go into closed sessions. Thank you. between the FEA and the Freeburg High School Board of Education for the new MAP SAT review as presented. So moved. So moved. Second. Start with you, Ray. Aye. 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 Motion passes. <coughs> moved to retain all fall, all fall head coaches for the 2019-2020 season. So moved. Second. Approve the hiring of Gary Webb as part-time maintenance worker. <coughs> so moved. I second that. Aye. 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 Moved to approve the hiring of Sean Dipper for the library technology aid for the remainder of the 2018-2019 school year. So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. Approve the hiring of Sonny Smith as the assistant softball coach for the 2018-2019 school year. Moved. Second. Aye. 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 Motion passes. That's it. We have a motion to adjourn this evening. Moved. Reynolds, second Mr. Madrell. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.